This pure performance gaming PC can play literally every single title in 1440p high or ultra settings and somehow we still even got some RGB in there. Now to be fair, I could have saved even like 10 more dollars and went with the classic deep cool matrix 40 case, but I've used that in my last two pure performance gaming PC build guide videos so it was time to switch things up. Regardless though, if you're just interested in building a 100% performance based gaming PC without wasting any single dollar for aesthetics, then this is the exact build guide that you should follow. I don't care how it looks. You ain't got no class. I'm gonna show you all the parts inside of here. We're gonna benchmark it to see what it's fully capable of. And I'm even gonna be revealing my quick and dirty calculation to determine if a PC actually has good price to performance. All of that after a word from today's sponsor. Ugreen, and specifically their new NAS Sync DXP4800 Plus. Most of you already know this, but I'm definitely one of those home server slash home NAS type of nerds. But for these types of devices, absolutely anybody can use them. This allows you to basically set up your own cloud server, which is great because then you don't have to rely on those bigger corporations keeping your data secure and not spying on you. I'm also just getting a great vibe from the company Ugreen because they originally wanted to stack ours full of four terabyte hard drives and I quickly mentioned that we could use some more storage, so... <laughs> they actually came in super clutch for us. Setting up a NAS like this is super simple and you don't even need tools to get it done. You just pop out all of these hard drives in here, connect the device to your network with one of these two 10 gig and 2.5 gig ethernet ports, and then the software finds all of those drives and walks you through the entire setup process. This four bay model can support up to 96 terabytes of total storage, and it even has a five core Intel CPU in here, so using the software is blazing fast. I also love how this UI is super clean and user friendly. I'd be comfortable setting up this type of device in my grandparents' house. If you use this Ugreen NAS for photo storage, there's also an integrated AI smart assistant, a ton of other apps for you to use, and you can even expand the DDR5 RAM if you want to upgrade. If you want to take your data security and ownership to the next level, definitely check out the new NAS Sync DXP4800 Plus, and I'll have a link down in the description and in the pinned comment to check it out. Thanks again to Ugreen for sponsoring this video, and big thanks again to them for hooking up me and my editors with a lot more storage. We definitely needed it. All right, so in order to keep this bill right at $750, you only have to buy one used part, and it's not actually used, it's just from AliExpress. The Ryzen 5 5600 is the CPU that's gonna make this entire project a possibility, and specifically because you can pick them for right over $100 on AliExpress. But don't worry, if you think that AliExpress is just the big bad wolf and you never wanna buy from them, then you can repeat this exact build guide. Your build is just gonna cost like 20 to 30 bucks more if you go on Amazon or Newegg. My total cost for the project was $756, so at most, yours will only be like $775 if you want to buy everything brand new. Personally, I have zero problems buying especially CPUs from AliExpress because there are some reputable stores on here that actually sell some of these brand new with a ton of five-star reviews, and I've never had an issue with them. Everything else inside this build is 100% brand new and only from Amazon or Newegg, so this is a 100% repeatable build guide that you can easily follow. Next up, we have the motherboard, and this is the Azure B450M ACR 2.0, and for whatever reason, this model keeps going on Newegg sales all the time. I snagged mine at $55 in a combo sale, but that price is all over the place, including the sales of sometimes down to $50, $55, and sometimes $65. The exact model of motherboard you go with for a pure performance budget build guide like this isn't super important. I would just make sure that it's a B450 model for value. I would make sure that you have four RAM slots for upgradeability, and then just make sure that you buy from a trusted manufacturer. I also also like the ones that have built-in Wi-Fi like this one, especially if you're a PC flipper, but that's definitely not a requirement if you plan on using Ethernet, which you probably should be doing. Now next up we have the RAM, and this came in the combo with my motherboard that I just mentioned, and it resulted in the kit only costing 20 bucks. This is a T-Force Vulcan Z DDR4 kit that's clocked at 3200 megahertz, and that brings our motherboard and RAM combo price up to only $75. I love this deal so much that I bought a stack of five of them. The more you buy, the more you save. And even though these ugly gray sticks are going to be tough for someone like me to use, that deal was just too good to pass up. Some of you probably don't care, but I find it really difficult to use these gray sticks with the aesthetic builds because it just doesn't look right with the all black builds, and I'm probably not going to build a gray themed build anytime soon. But for a pure performance gaming PC where the aesthetics don't matter, 
we're in the clear. We're also in the clear with this SSD because there are easily like five or six models that you can interchange here without a problem. I went with the Clev Craft C710, which is a one terabyte NVMe Gen 3 drive for $60. And with our CPU mobile combo, going with a Gen 3 drive is perfectly fine. And like I said, there's always a bunch of models available around the $60 price point. And just for the record, $60 is actually not a good price point for a one terabyte NVMe SSD. I've made videos talking about this before, but the only PC component that's actually going up in price right now is is the SSD. One terabyte Gen 3 drives were getting around that $40 mark towards the middle of last year, and that price has continued to rise ever since. I do believe we've been at this $60 mark now for a few months, so hopefully that means that we've finally reached the high point, but I don't have a crystal ball, so who actually knows what's gonna happen. And finally, to finish off this motherboard section, we have the CPU cooler, and I went with the stock cooler that just comes with the Ryzen 5 5600. Keep in mind that some of the AliExpress sellers won't actually give you the cooler, so make sure you research that before buying, but since I'm betting that most of you are just gonna buy from Amazon or Newegg anyway, you'll definitely get a cooler if you go down that route. The stock Ryzen cooler is perfectly fine for a non-overclocked 5600, and even in a slightly more expensive $750 build, I definitely think that this is the route to take if you are concentrated on pure performance. Sure, if you throw a $30 air tower cooler in here, then you'll get better PBO performance, for example. So if you have the flexibility for your budget, then I would do that, but if not, you'll be perfectly fine. Next up, let's talk about the graphics card, because we have to talk about this before we talk about the power supply today. This is the ASRock Challenger RX 7700XC, and this is actually the exact same GPU that I just used in my $1,000 pure performance build guide. Now, it is actually kind of weird that we're using the same GPU in drastically different priced gaming PCs, but here's the reason why. In that video, it's honestly roughly about the same layout of a system, but instead of a 5600 AM4 build, that $1,000 build used a 7600 with AM5. There is a disclaimer here because we're we're actually leaving a little bit of performance on the table. If you use the older AM4 CPUs, you'll actually get more FPS and thus more performance right this very second. That $250 difference between builds is how much it costs to upgrade to Ryzen 7000 series CPUs with a more expensive AM5 motherboard and 32 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM. Now, granted, that $1,000 build is objectively better than this system, there's no question about it, but it is weird that they have the same GPU. We'll cover the performance in the benchmarking section, but just know that since we'll be gaming in 1440p, there honestly won't be a drastic difference in the $750 build guy versus the 1000. Moving on before that though, next up we have the power supply, and this is another MSI A550BM, which is rated tier C on the PSU tier list, and this is definitely the very minimum that I recommend going with this type of build. For whatever reason, AMD actually recommends a minimum of a 700 watt power supply, and these recommendations are in fact always overestimated to keep the consumer safe, but I do feel like this specific recommendation is way higher than normal. According to Tech Power Up, the max power draw is only 245 watts, and when you put our CPU and GPU in PC Part Picker, we're way under 400 watts total. We fully stress tested this PC and obviously benchmarked it, and we had absolutely zero issues, so the 550 watt power supply is perfectly fine, but that doesn't mean I recommend doing that. There's still advantages of getting more wattage, such as min-maxing the power efficiency curve and having more headroom for when you do upgrade. For a pure performance focused challenge like this, I'm okay with making that sacrifice, especially since it did work perfectly fine, but that doesn't mean it's recommended for your own personal build. Spend the few extra bucks. And speaking of a few extra bucks, we did just that with our case, and this is the Sama ARGB Q5, which you can almost always find on Newegg for 55 bucks. This is actually a meta PC flipping case right now because it packs a ton of value with the three pre-installed ARGB fans, but if you did want to shed a few dollars off this project, then you can of course go with that Matrix 40 for less than $45 that I mentioned earlier. The absolutely only reason I didn't do that was because we used that case twice in the last two months, so I needed to switch things up for content. All in all, here's what our full parts list is looking like, and this is just a very minimum seven component list that totals out to $756. We don't have any extra line here for cable extensions, a CPU cooler, or literally anything extra. This is the bare minimum, but that's exactly what we're trying to do in order to get the highest FPS for our money. And speaking of that, let's jump into the benchmarking section. And first we tested 3D Mark's Time Spy and we got an obnoxious score of 14,246. I'm telling you right now, that is literally one of the best price performance ratios I've ever gotten in a gaming PC build. Behind the scenes, I'm actually always running a little equation in my head to determine how good of a price to performance a build has. And I've never actually shared this with anybody. Back in the day, like three to five years ago, I consider a $500 gaming PC with a 
5,000 times by score to be pretty solid. Same thing with a $1,000 PC getting a score of 10,000. Basically, we just had to multiply by 10. Lately, over the last one to two years or so, I would say, that equation has gone up to about a 14 to 15 multiplier. A $500 gaming PC should be ideally getting a 7,000 plus score, and a $1,000 PC should be getting at least a 14,000 score. Now, I know that this system has its flaws and it is definitely not perfect or well drawn out, but this is what's been in my head over the last few decades of me building a gaming PC, or at least since we started using TimeSpy. So it works in my head, but this isn't perfect. Here's a couple of examples for you real quickly though. My most recent $1,000 pure performance build got a TimeSpy score of 15,378. That's a multiplier of 15, so pretty solid. My $400 pure performance build got a score of 8,983, which is a multiplier of 21, which is honestly probably the best I've ever done before. Here's my $500 PC from seven months ago, which I told you all specifically not to follow because the price performance was bad. And that one got a score of 4,378. And finally that $1,000 pre-built that I bought six months ago got a score of 8,646, which is obviously terrible. Now for you spreadsheet nerds out there, yes, I know this system has its flaws, but again, this is just what I do in my head very quickly and it usually works. Just don't make a video reacting to how dumb my system is because if you do that, then I'm gonna have to react to your reaction and just please don't do that. No matter what though, the fact that this $750 gaming PC cranked out a multiplier of almost 20 is absolutely insane. And remember, in that last $1,000 pure performance video, we came to the conclusion that this 7700 XT isn't just a 1080p slash 1440p GPU. This is a 100% pure 1440p high to ultra GPU. Case in point here with Helldivers 2, because in 1440p high settings, we got just over that 60 FPS target mark. Same thing with Starfield in 1440p high. No upscaling technology was enabled, mind you, and here we still got 62. Even Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 in 1440p ultra settings got 160 FPS, perfect for a higher refresh rate monitor. And for Cyberpunk in 1440p ultra, we got 72 FPS. Here's the rest of the games that we tested, and other than Fortnite and Valorant, which was intentional, this $750 gaming PC played every single title in 1440p ultra settings without a problem. I know it's definitely the trend and the thing to do to complain about GPU prices and the prices of pretty much everything right now, but the price to performance of gaming PCs is actually getting better lately not worse. Now granted, you have to know what you're doing and really min-max the performance like we did here today, but the fact that we can build a 1440p ultra build for 750 bucks is pretty incredible. The price of these 7700 XTs is actually continuing to go down as well. At the time of writing this video, the Challenger is $10 cheaper than what I paid for, and I have a feeling these will be at 380 to 390 before we know it. Now, I do want to hear from you guys of what price I should make my next price to performance gaming PC build guide video, and if you did miss the previous episode, then feel free to click the video that's on the screen now.